the preface um this conversation we have to talk about that the chiefs will need to re-sign tyron matthew um in order to make the cap space to trade for Xavier Howard. I don't think, I didn't see many um, real cap saving moves they could make other than that. I think there, there might be a few deals they could restructure, but it's kind of like jeopardizing this, their um, salary cap if they're trying to fit it in and elsewhere. But in a Tyron Matthew extension, it's very easy to get down from his almost $20 million salary cap hit to something more manageable, like $13 million, and get the salary cap space needed. Because shockingly, the Chiefs have $8 million salary cap space right now. So they have a decent amount of room. Um, so if a Tyron Matthew extension happens and they get that room, and another thing, the second preface is, if what Xavier Howard is saying in his statement is true, where he's not asking for a new contract. It almost seemed like he wasn't even asking for new money. He just wanted more guaranteed money. If that's true and he's not asking for new money, I would give up a first rounder plus more for him. Um, there is injury concerns with him. He's only played 16 games twice in his career, and the other two were not even close to 16. Um, he had an off-the-field issue, I believe, two years ago. So last year was definitely his best year just personally wise and uh, on the field wise, injury wise, whatever you can say. But if he doesn't want new money, there's definitely a world where the chiefs could trade for him, restructure half of his base salary this year, um, which gives them a lot more guarantees, lowers his cap hit to around 8 million so they can easily fit him in and then uh, go from there. And his cap hits wouldn't be too bad after this year. For a top five corner, which is what he played as last year, it would be 16, 15, 14 the next three years, and he'd be cuttable after year two, so next year. So the cap hits aren't bad, and he would get he could the Chiefs could also guarantee some base salary next year or something if you wanted more guarantees. So and he would have the number one quarterback contract on his team, which he did point out was a stick a sticking point for him with Byron Jones on his team. So if all those things pan out, I would give up a first and more for him just because he seems like the missing piece to me because the Chiefs just – I'm concerned about the cornerback room. As much as I like LeJarrius Sneed, they're asking him to basically play all the snaps on defense and play outside and inside well, well enough to be like a CB1 on the outside and a top nickel corner on the inside. It just seems like a lot – to ask of young players on this roster. And it seems like the position group they're not happy with the most. Yeah. And if there's one position the Chiefs have shown they don't really care about investing in, it's cornerback. And right. if there was one position they could change that narrative and invest heavily in, it's also cornerback. Like the Chiefs could easily go after Xavier Howard um, and show, hey guys, we're not screwing around with this we we want the lockdown cornerback group and like imagine a world with legerius sneed Xavier howard tyron matthew juan thornhill like and willie gay and anthony hitchens potentially i guess hitchens would probably be gone now that's a separate conversation we're probably going to have on another podcast but willie gay and nick bolton even then chris jones um and whoever the heck you want on the front four like man Talk about coverage sacks and stuff like that. The Chiefs would have a lockdown secondary. It would be fantastic. Um, they'd have to, like you said, restructure Tyron Matthew. They'd have to be cognizant of Orlando Brown's contract, of Tyree Kill's contract, um, stuff like that. But you mentioned the salary cap boom in 2023, as it's projected. That could be something that they take advantage of, backload right. those deals. Um, it's possible. It's feasible. And I agree with you. He could be the missing piece to really turn this team from a one-sided juggernaut to a team that's really, really well built on defense. Yeah. And I think the salary cap boom is the only way the future uh, in the future makes the move for Xavier Howard possible because there's projections that because they kind of borrowed from future years for the salary cap last year due to COVID, um, it was from the first, the two years after. So it was 2021, 2022, I believe. So 2023 is the first year where we see the new CBA take into effect and the revenue share and all the new revenue um, for the salary cap comes in. And so we'll see the salary cap go from, I think it's 200,000 ish right now to, I think over the cap uh, was projecting it to be like 260 million 
in 2023 or something, something ridiculous. So with that, if the Chiefs can just hold on the next few years and make the salary cap work, uh, they can have a stacked roster still. Because Mahomes, I wrote about this in um, maybe my most viewed article on uh, SI Chiefs Arrowhead Report, um, his contracts basically below market value for a quarterback, even a top 10 quarterback, not even the best quarterback for the next like seven years. So his cap hit will be um, decreased. They'll be able to get out of the Frank Clark contract either this year or next year, whenever they choose, especially if he gets suspended. Um, like I said in another article, because his base salary will void the guarantees on that. So combining lows and the salary cap boom, it, it's possible to have a lot of big contracts on the Chiefs team. It's just a matter of if they're comfortable with the player and the draft capital given them. 